Good morning! Today we'll be investigating the motion of this plane through this simulation. Specifically, we'll be investigating how mass, acceleration, and thrust are related to each other. Now, a force is any push or pull. The thrust force is the main force that is responsible for pushing the plane down the runway. All forces are measured in the unit called Newton. To give you an idea of how large a Newton is, when you hold a typical apple steady, you are exerting about one Newton of force. In addition to thrust, another force acting on a plane is called drag. However, in today's activity, we are going to ignore the drag force but there are other videos where we take the drag force into account. So with our simulation, we're going to vary the thrust force and we're going to try to measure the acceleration while keeping the mass steady. These are the values we're going to use for our thrust force. Let's see the simulation now. Here's our simulation. Our mass value is 10,000 kilograms and our thrust value is 100,000 newtons. Let's see what we get for acceleration. Ah, first acceleration of the plane down the runway is 10 meters per second per second. We'll dial in our next force, 120,000 newtons. Interesting. The acceleration has increased as we've increased the thrust force. Now it's 12. 140,000 newtons of thrust. Hmm, 14. You can almost guess that for 160,000 newtons of thrust, well, the acceleration is 16. Hmm, there does seem to be some sort of connection between these numbers. And finally, for good measure, 180,000 newtons of thrust. 18 meters per second per second. So here's our data table. And let's plot this data. Thrust force on the x-axis, acceleration on the y-axis. And let's try to determine an equation for this line. So we have the most general equation, y equals mx plus b. But our y-axis is acceleration, so we'll rewrite that as acceleration equals mx plus b. Our x-axis is thrust, so we'll rewrite the equation as acceleration equals m times thrust plus b. m represents the slope of the line. So we will draw the run and the rise for this line. And the run is 80,000 newtons. How do we get 80,000 newtons? Well, notice the run starts at 100,000 newtons and ends at 180,000 newtons. The difference is 80,000 newtons. The rise is 8 meters per second per second. How do we get that? Well, notice the rise starts at 10 and ends at 18, the difference being 8. And so calculating slope, slope, remember, is rise over run. 8 divided by 80,000. And we end up with this value for slope. Now, substituting that value into the equation, we're almost there we're left with trying to figure out what B is. And so how do we get B? Well, remember that B is the y-intercept. So we extend the line and notice that B is equal to zero. Now this makes sense. This is telling us that when the thrust is exactly zero newtons, because that's the x value, the acceleration is also zero. And so this seems to be our final equation. Acceleration equals zero decimal zero 
zero, zero, 001 multiplied by the thrust force. Exploring this equation in a bit greater detail now, notice that 0 decimal 0, 0, 0, 001 can be written as 1 over 10,000. And so I'm going to use that fraction in this equation. And we have an acceleration equals thrust divided by 10,000. Hmm, interesting. Going back to our simulation, and you can rewind the video if you wish, the mass was 10,000 kilograms. Is there a connection between that 10,000 and the 10,000 in the simulation? Well, there is. The more general formula for acceleration is that it's equal to thrust over mass for this specific simulation. And in fact, now, regardless of whether it's a plane taking off or any object experiencing a force, the most general equation is that acceleration equals force over mass. So when there is more than one force acting on an object, we have to extend this equation. Acceleration equals net force over mass. So we use this equation when there's more than one force acting on an object, which is very common in everyday life and in physics problems. What does net mean? Net means the sum of all the forces acting on the object. For our plane, the net force was just the thrust force because that was the only force that was pushing the plane down the runway. This equation is formally known as Newton's second law. And as you can see from the equation, it makes a prediction. Every equation in physics tells a story. And if you understand the story, then physics becomes a lot easier. So the story this equation tells is this. As mass increases, acceleration decreases. That's the story that this equation tells us. And this equation makes sense in everyday life. If you've ever lifted an apple in a bowling ball, you know that the acceleration of an apple will always be greater than that of a bowling ball because it's just that much lighter. In textbooks and in other sources, this equation is also written as net force equals mass times acceleration. So how do we interpret what this actual equation means when written in this format? What story does this equation tell when written in this format? Well, imagine we had a one kilogram cube. And imagine we wanted to accelerate it at one meters per second per second. In other words, if this cube was originally at rest, after one second, we want this cube to have a speed of one meter per second. That's what that acceleration means. According to this law written by Sir Isaac Newton, to accelerate a one kilogram object, one meter per second per second requires a force, a net force of one Newton. And so, I hope you've enjoyed today's explanation and example of Newton's second law. Have a great day. Bye-bye.